Okay guys, as promised, this is the avionics upgrade video for the RV6. Took about three months to complete because we kept adding to the project. Anyways, the specifics of the avionics will be down in the description if you wanna know exactly what we did. But uh, let's take a peek inside. Let me know what you think. We did a lot of things. Yeah. G5 backup, G3X does everything. GFC 500 autopilot, we've got the audio panel, uh, the, I think it's a 375 WAS transponder GPS navigator. We got a nav comm with an ILS and a localizer. And then we have another comm buried underneath the panel. To the right is my iPad, which talks to everything. So let's hop in here, see what we got. Master switch on. G3X is gonna power up. Oh man, there's a lot of glare. Sorry about that. Power up the iPad too. All right, so iPad is the map. G3X also has a map. So the layout, like I said, we did a whole new panel. We removed the old aluminum panel completely, cut a new one, and put this vinyl wrap, looks like carbon fiber. Hit some continue. I'm gonna hit the Aviotics Master too. I have so many switches, all toggles. Fuel pump, electronic primer, Landing light, taxi light, nav light, strobe lights, pedo heat was on from before. Glare shield lights, autopilot master, avionics master. Oh, my back. Continue, continue. All right, like I said, the G3X. A pretty cool machine. Um, it's very intuitive. If I wanna see, there's my big screen. I got a map over here, I can zoom in, zoom out. I got traffic here for now, I can make that whatever I wanna make that. Um, hit this, oh, and I got a very detailed engine monitor. Separate fuel calculator. Fuel calculator's awesome. I, I never even calibrated it. Said I used 21, I used 20.6. Maybe I'll throw some pictures of that in here right now. Here's the fuel computer saying we use 21.0 gallons. And here's the fuel pump, 20.6. I'm within four tenths of a gallon, not too bad. But everything in the cockpit you could control from this screen if you wanted to. Transponder, I got the transponder over here. I could just touch that and put it in. Or I could just come up here and just type, type in the numbers. The COM, COM1, if I want to tune it, I got it right here. I could enter anything in at all. COM2, the only way to do COM2 is here because I have no head. As you can see, I ran out of room for my COM2 head. We may be able to put it in there, but we didn't. You don't need to. It's all controllable from up here. Back to full screen anytime you want. Little iCast type messages telling me what's going on with the airplane. Right now I'm in VOR mode. Simple as can be. Touch that. What do you want your source to be? Oh, I'd rather that be GPS mode. Well, now it's GPS mode. Just an amazing, amazing unit. We stepped up the budget a little bit. Um, over here, the G5, it has everything you need. I could shoot approaches, it's got my airspeed, you know, the autopilot controls show up on it. This is the setup though, this is the new cockpit. I wanted to make a flying video today. I'm gonna show you my flying video. But it's, uh, it's so bumpy today. It's just an absolute disaster trying to make a video on it. It's winds are gonna be gusting to 30 here pretty soon. So I gotta get, get this airplane put away here. But this is the cockpit, the general update. I wanna do some flying ones where I show you some of the, how it works, shooting approaches, setting minimums. I mean, that's another thing. You wanna set minimums on the approach? Just come over here, set your minimums, dial them in. The airplane will know. Um, for the go around feature, this is really nice. This autopilot, when you get everything Garmin, Everything just works and talks to each other. On the go around, when I get to the missed approach point, I push the throttle full in and then my thumb hits the go around button and nothing suspends. It flies the, the missed approach. It goes up to the altitude, it tracks the course, it enters the holding pattern. Really, really amazing. And I, I could have done another G3X over here, but I'd rather do this iPad. The iPad is so versatile and I could flight plan at home. I could do everything I need to come out and just sync it up. Let me show you, for example, if they're talking right now, I go to my favorites. Let's say I wanna to go to this place, loads it up in the map. There it is, right? Pretty cool. Um, come up here to flight plan, send to panel, boom. Come over here, it says, hey, you got a message. Somebody sent you something. Preview it, 
just to activate it. And now, you come over here, it's there. So I could do all my flight planning at home, out of the bumps, come in, set the iPad in place, and just communicate what I want it to do. And it's it's got the whole thing in there. That's the flying to visit uh, my kids route. Anyway, and down here you got maps, you got the regular chart. I mean, you almost don't need the iPad just because I've got this chart right here. It even shows a little traffic flying by. Um, you know, waypoint information, my flight plan when I load that in, and there it is. It'll just load up the weather, terrain, traffic page. I mean, that's a great big traffic page. There's a guy flying by right now. Um, all the satellite information. There's so much information. It's going to take me a while to figure it all out. But uh, like I said, the nice thing about this is anything you want to mess with on this page, you just touch it and it appears. And it's just super, super intuitive. One last look at the panel here, the autopilot controller, the uh, audio panel, Bluetooth, talk on your phone, and then the, uh, the transponder and GPS navigator and the navcom. I did spend a little extra, it's about 4,000 extra on this to add the VOR and ILS, but I may train my son in this plane for his instrument rating. And if I'm gonna do that, he needs to know how to shoot an ILS. He needs how to track VOR um, radials and shoot VOR approaches. So it was a little expensive to have it, but it's it's there forever now. And we got a little more uh, usefulness. Here comes the helicopter. Focus. Anyways, that's what I did. Um, it's nice to start with a clean panel. Like I said, we situated all these switches right where we wanted them. We. Uh, got all the circuit breakers out of the way where it made more sense. You look at the before and after, I had a hodgepodge of old instruments. And they worked, you know, I had cylinder head temperature on every cylinder, I had exhaust gas temperature, I had carburetor, I mean, I had them all, but they were all little like auto zone, automotive type uh, looking gauges. And they were all kind of old. So we just started with a clean slate. So this is my setup. I could shoot instrument approaches. I could just holding the airplane level when you're going some places. Really, really nice. A lot less fatiguing. So uh, this is what we did. I'll show you a little flying video. It, it's a mess because I'm just bouncing around so much today. It's real bumpy. So I've got to go move this uh, airplane to another airport and put it away. And uh, yeah, we'll get better videos going forward. Thanks for watching. Okay, so here's the in-flight video. Just really, really bumpy. I apologize about the bouncing around, but I just wanted you guys to see this thing in action. So I'm flying there. You see I have the synthetic terrain. It's working really good. I've got the traffic page up there. Just showing the uh, heading select button on the autopilot. That's one thing about these. It is hard in turbulence to hit these touchscreen buttons. That's why it's nice sometimes to have an iPad. You can grab with both hands and just program it that way. So flying in, uh, I think I'm in southern Wisconsin right now. Check out the engine gauges, the fuel calculations. Not too shabby, 8.7 gallons an hour, zipping right along. See, we also have uh, winds aloft there to the, just below the airspeed tape. That's a very handy feature as well. You know, so transponder that I could uh, control the autopilot. Look at this. I don't even need to go to the uh, autopilot head. I could do everything right here on the G3X. Sometimes it's nice to have those tactile buttons. So, so now I touch that, I'm gonna switch over to VR mode, show you what that looks like. Just touch it, now everything turns green and it's pointing to uh, Janesville VOR. Really bumpy, I think I just about hit my head on that one. So I'm gonna come back out of uh, VOR mode, just that simple, back in a GPS mode, come up here, push navigation, and now watch the plane is going to turn to navigate me uh, well, it doesn't have to turn very much, navigating me back home. Now I'm gonna grab the altitude select knob, dial that down to about 3,000 feet. And then I have to select a way I'm gonna get down. So I'm gonna hit indicated airspeed to hold my cruise airspeed. And now I just pull the power back. The airspeed populates there, 141, I think it was 141 knots. So I just pull the power back and the airplane's gonna hold that 141 knots in the descent. I could also do a vertical speed of my choosing, or I could just set the pitch all with the little control wheel on the autopilot 
controller head there. Back to full screen. There's the iPad, the big map that never goes away, that I love. Usually shows traffic and everything on there. Again, there's the circuit breakers where we put them off to the side. Okay, that's enough bouncing around. Let's show you the before and after pictures. The before shot, a perfectly good VFR panel. We had a GPS, we had a fuel computer, we had cylinder head temperature, exhaust gas temperature, carburetor, outside air temperature, oil pressure, but all those are the gauges on the right and they were just kind of dated and uh, needed to go. The panel was a little disorganized, random circuit breakers. So now we'll cut over to the new panel. And this just uh, looks a lot better. It also was a hard in the old days to find a place to put the iPad. That's why we organized everything where I had an iPad space. So as a review, we got the G3X, that's the big screen. The G5 is the backup. We did a GNC 255A Navcom. That's at the bottom of the stack. Garmin GTR20 Remote Com. Garmin GMA245 Audio Panel. A lot of usefulness there as well that we can go over in a future video. And the Garmin GNX375 GPS Transponder. And of course, the Garmin Autopilot. I believe we call it the GFC500 Autopilot. If you're uh, wondering about the price of all this, uh, maybe I'll reveal that at a later date. It's just too painful to say it out loud right now. But anyways, let me uh, know what you think and uh, what we could have done differently. I could have done a Garmin 650, I guess, but I've got everything I need. I don't need the 650, and this was a little more economical, and I still have the Navcom and the WAS GPS, So, and it, it's bigger, and we are really space limited. So on a RV6A, for me, this is the exact panel I thought I needed to optimize everything. And right now, I wouldn't change a thing. Thanks again for watching.